All right. Good morning, everyone. It is three minutes after 10 o'clock. I am Jennifer Grishka, CEO of the Jewish Women's Foundation of the Greater Palm Beaches. And uh, thanks for joining us for another um, Impact Tuesdays webinar. So today, we'll be speaking with a few wonderful women from La Ofec to talk about the Achotenu program. Uh, so I will let everyone actually introduce themselves and say what their role is within the organization. So Eileen, why don't we start with you? Okay, I'm, um, I work at La OFEC for, since I think 2012, and my job is Director of Strategic Fundraising. Okay, Michal. Um, the same, I work at the La OFEC since uh, um, eight years ago, Eileen, I'm not sure. Around the, around, yeah, around, the, we came in around the same time, remember we met in Jerusalem. Yeah. Yes, and um, I'm managing the program. No, oh. she, uh, she's being very modest. Wait, let, let me correct that. About a half a year, about that time, um, Rav Yosef Tzvi Rimon, who's the chairman of, um, of La Ofec, mm -hmm. he, uh, he looked for an expert who could help him with an idea, an expert on uh, Ethiopian Jewry and employment. And he looked around and uh, Michal was recommended. And he gave her six months to do research. He said, what I want is the following. I want you to visit the Ethiopian community mm -hmm. and I want you to find out the following. One, what is it that they want to do in terms of a career that will provide them with a decent income? Why do they want to do this? What's preventing them from doing this? And six months later, Michal came back with the answer. And 90% of the people she interviewed said, and I'm gonna come back to this later because it's, it touches my heart very deeply. 90% said, I wanna be a nurse. Mm -hmm. I want to give to people. And Michal launched the program. She designed it. Everything about the program has Michal's careful, delicate, considerate touch in it. <laughs> Everything. That's okay? wonderful. Yes, thank you. So we're, we're, we're going to get into the details about the organization and the program. Um, and then we're also joined by a student today. I'm afraid I'm going to mispronounce her name. So please um, introduce yourself. Um, my name is Tadanich. I'm a student here and I'm in my second year and I'm 23 years old. Um, I'm really actually happy about this program because it's providing us so much. I mean, I could go and do all the things all by myself, but it wouldn't give me what a hotel was giving me. So I'm really thankful for that. Um, well, thank just, you for, for being with us today. Um, it's always so great to have someone who's actually going through the program to talk about the experience. So um, I guess Eileen or Michal, uh, can you tell us what the organization does as a whole? And then let's talk about Achotenu specifically and, and what that program aims to do. Well, Michal and I will split the job function. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about La Ofec and Michal will talk more about the program since she's the in-house, outhouse expert. <laughs> um, La Ofic was actually established under a different name in 2006 and transitioned into La Ofic in, I think, uh, 2016. The goal is the following, and it's actually based on the Rambam, Maimonides, who says that the best way to help a person is not to give him money, Mm -hmm. The best way to help a person is to enable him to find the correct job where he can support himself and his family. And I'm not going to go into the whole reasoning why, because it's, it's very obvious to us. It brings, it brings dig dignity 
there's there becomes a model in the family about how to raise a family, how to sustain a family, and it pulls them out of poverty. It breaks that ceiling of poverty mm -hmm. because this this group who the, these young men and women who are in our program now, we have four men, rest are women, I think, and Michal will correct me if my numbers are wrong. Their children are not going to need your help. Do you know why? Because you already made this work. Once this program works, once these young people are out in the play, in the Israel's medical institutions and working and providing for their family, they've paved the path for their children. It's clear what they have to do. It's mm -hmm. clear what their goal is going to be. And the whole pro, every one of the programs that we run in there are three and a half, four programs that we run. Mm -hmm. Success is based on employment. That's how we measure success. When we're asked on applications, how do you measure success? Right now we're measuring success, how many are passing. But the next level of success, once our first cohort graduates, is going to be how many are working. Very simple. How many mm -hmm. are working and able to support their families. And that's what La Ofik is about, employment-based projects. Okay. Michal and Pete Patati must speak. So we started at La Ofik, um, uh, as we said, uh, 10 years ago, and uh, eight years ago. And we started uh, with a pilot of uh, 10, 10 students. Mm -hmm. that uh, went to two and a half years of diploma, being a nurse by diploma, not by a, a academic degree. Okay. Okay. Eileen, uh, correct me, correct my English. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, I always um, get confused. They can only do some of the tasks. I think it's called a practical nurse as opposed to a registered nurse. I always get the terms confused. It's registered a nurse, but not academic nurse. Right. That's right. Different. And, and uh, after we saw that uh, all of them uh, succeed and there is no problem, uh, even if they are uh, parents and even uh, if they are uh, uh, got into the, the, the school without... Uh, um, the psychometric, how do you say? Psychometric, the equivalent of the SAT. Okay. Yeah. And uh, after that, we looked for somewhere else that we can uh, we can take the program uh, uh, higher level to academic nurses because in Israel, uh, at the hospitals, uh, big hospitals, you can work only if you are academic nurse. Okay. Um, and you can uh, go up to managing uh, jo um, jobs, uh, duties, uh, only if, if you are academic. Uh, so after a while, we found uh, the Hebrew University. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that was interesting in this uh, program. And uh, I must say that we started with nurses because um, Israel is very um, short with nurses. Mm -hmm. And um, we looked for um, a professional that will be in the health, will take part in the health of the society. Right. Uh, that even I always say to the students or everyone that agree to listen mm -hmm. that uh, 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 the dream is if one, uh, if a patient which is, I don't know, uh, doesn't like, uh, don't like people uh, who, 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 who don't look like him or look different, mm -hmm. maybe it's, a, it's a, an option to, to change his uh, in, um, his point of view. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so, so just to summarize for everyone, so uh, Achotenu is a program that takes Ethiopian women 
and trains mm -hmm. them for them to become nurses. Um, yeah. So I'd like to talk about, I guess, sort of why um, Ethiopian specifically. Um, and also, you know, I want to talk about what the experience is like in Israel um, for the Ethiopian community uh, and for, you know, people of color. Because I think that that's something probably a lot of Americans are not really um, familiar with. Okay. can tell us how is it feel to be a woman with color in Israel? Ben one. Um, you definitely can feel people staring at you and asking you, oh really, you're going to be a nurse. They don't usually expect people, especially Ethiopians, um, to go to study because they see statistics and they see um, the things that go up in, in the newspaper and everywhere. And they don't think that many of us wants to learn or even want to have a career. They think that we do just, we just want to go to work and that's it. And this is one of the things that can show them to the people that think that we don't do that, that it's not true, that we do want to have a career, we do want to do something that is meaningful and that can benefit us and the community because when the other um, Ethiopian girls or men, it doesn't really matter, sees us and they see that more and more people, Ethiopian especially, is going to the universities, the college and, every, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, they can do it too. They don't just see it as something that it's, oh, I'm not gonna do it because my mom didn't go to university, so I'm not gonna go either. She is okay with, with her job, with what she's doing right now. They can see that they have more options and it's more than, I mean, I am really excited. Every time that every um, girl asking me what you do, I'm also, her, oh, I'm going to a nursing school. And she's, oh, that's cool. I'm telling her, it's not just cool, you can do it. It's not like some, you can ask, you can, there is a lot of programs. If something in school is harder for you, you just need to look because the options are out there and they are looking for people to do it. They're looking for like something like, oh, like pioneers to do it. And that's, I mean, amazing. Mm -hmm. Just to show them. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to hear a little bit more about your background if you don't mind sharing that with me. So your, your family, um, they came from Ethiopia. Were you born in Ethiopia? Or were you born in Israel? Um, um, and how did you learn about Ahotenu? Um, I was born in Ethiopia, but I came here when I was three years old. Um, my parents are retired, they don't work. They're really older, they're like very elderly. We are 10 brothers and sisters but most of them are married and have mm -hmm. children and everything. They're a lot much bigger than I, older than I am. Um, and the way that I've heard about Ahotenu is actually from a friend. She knew that I like the whole medical word, but I also really like to help people mm -hmm. and the whole sort of helping to the other. And I, she, I actually met her when I was, uh, when I volunteered in our community center in my neighborhood. And she told me, I, and she just said, I remember that you like the whole uh, medical word. And I heard about this program, it's called mm -hmm. the Hotenu. They are um, helping students and just Jewish, uh, Jewish women and actually also men um, to go to a nursing school. They, you can go to do a mehina. You don't have to have a, I don't know how you said, psychometry. We don't have to do it. We just have to do. Hmm? We have to just to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did have to do um, like psychotechnia tests. It's a lot of you have to go like through a lot of exams that they gave us to see if you fit. They ask you questions to see why you actually want to do it and not just because you heard about it and you thought it was cool. And mm -hmm. they really want wanted to know that you actually want this and you're actually going to be committed and responsible during the whole um, years so that you're going to learn. Mm -hmm. um, so after I heard that, I, I just said, yeah, that's what I want to do. This is two fields that I actually love. 
And that's how I heard about it. And I went and then I met with the people, with the students that also came there. And we talked with Michal and she and more and another one um, explained to us about the explained to us about the program. And I just knew that this is really what I wanted and it fits to everything. They help us with a lot of things with the dorms, with the financial mm -hmm. uh, area as well. So I knew that this is actually what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So were you already in the military? No, I did um, national service for one year. I did it actually in a hospital. I was, I was working there as a secretary. I was in the cardiac, um, the cardiac department. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the nurses. That was actually one of, one of the things that uh, drove me to the medical ward, especially to nurses, because I was with them all the time. Their station was really near to mine. And I saw how they work. And I thought that they, do, they were doing an amazing job. They were there all the time with the patients. I saw them, how the way they talked, the patients were, were actually treating them like they were family to them. They knew them and they, knew, they could ask me to, for example, one of the patients could, could say that, no, no, I was with uh, one nurse and, and one nurse and where is she? They knew the whole um, routine of the day of the nurses. That was amazing and I thought, she is your nurse. She's not actually your family. And most of them, most of the patients always said, no, right now she is family. She is like my sister, like my, they were, that was amazing to just listen to that from the patient. And I just thought it was amazing. And I actually fell more and more in love with uh, the nursing field. Mm -hmm. So how many years is the program? Um, it's actually five. Um. Uh, you yeah, the degree, the nursing degree is four years, but we do one year of Mechina. I don't know how you say it in English. A preparatory That's program. Right. Yeah, the third program, we did it for one year. Um, uh, there you can actually get a tour from English. You can just to, to do the background of everything. It helps you when you start the whole degree. Um, you can, like I did, for example, I uh, did all the English um, department, I don't know how to say it, I just did all the things that have to do with English there so that I wouldn't have to be worried about it in my degree. Mm -hmm. It actually, it takes a lot of burden off of you because doing English during the degree is a lot, it can take you um, one day and it's a lot of work, so it actually helps us. And then you go into the four years. I'm in my second. Okay. So it's a pretty uh, extensive training, mm -hmm. uh, this program. So how many other students are in the program right now? Right now, I think we are- 78. 78, is that like total? 78, yeah, total. Okay. And so they're all in different, I guess, points of the program? Like some are first year, some are fourth exactly. year? Okay. Exactly. Yes. Um, I just want to, to say that the psychometric exam is a cultural bias. That's why we look for a alternative to, to allow uh, those young, uh, amazing uh, people that cannot get to the university by the psychometric uh, exam. Okay. That's why they are doing the preparatory program. Um, the preparatory program is uh, a part of uh, the Hebrew University. Mm -hmm. and all, all, the, all the five years are with uh, uh, lots of other students from all different colors, uh, religions, and uh, uh, from Israel, uh, it's not a, a separated classes uh, in, in any any um, club, I mean, at any stage. <laughs> okay, and the the Mechina is specific to nursing students. No, no, no. There's no, it's for it's for students uh, students that want uh, young people that want to be students at the Hebrew University and I looking see. for a year that will. 
ישפר את ה... will improve the chance to get in. אוקיי. All of the students after the מכינה needs to do the psychometric exam, but אחותינו are not. Okay. They're, they're exempt. Now, here's again, if I may. Um, Michal had spoken about the psychometric exam. It's a culturally biased exam. Um, about 20%, easily 30% of the Ethiopian community, even if they've grown up here. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've come Not only Ethiopian. Not only huh? Ethiopian. Yeah. 20 to 30% score. Mm-hmm. to the, score lower than their Israeli counterparts. I once asked my brother-in-law, who's now a retired cardiologist, I call him the doctor, please do not put this on your YouTube. Um, I asked him, what does it mean to be culturally biased? He said, look, I went to day school. If they had asked me that a can of beer is such and such, he said, I would have had no idea what they were talking about. That's culturally biased. Terms that you do not have any encounter with at all because it's not part of your society. And we spoke at length. So when I explained to him about the Ethiopian, he said, yes, the psychometric in Israel is culturally biased. And it was mm-hmm. just an interesting insight that I had never thought about. Mm-hmm. So that's one point. The second point is one out of approximately two, approximately half of the Ethiopian community lives under the poverty line even though many of them have grown up in Israel. Mm-hmm. Because all these other options, these dreams, these options, not necessarily known to them, not, ha- not necessarily known how they can leverage them, how they can take advantage of them. So the brilliance of the program that Michal put together, it, I mean, it seems so logical. She came to the Hebrew University and she convinced them to bypass the psychometric exam. Well, we can't mm-hmm. do that. We've not, we haven't done that for anybody else. So they do one exam that everyone has to do. It's called the psychometric, which by the way, everyone at the nursing school doesn't even like it, but it's you know, just something that you, you kind of get used to, like an old skirt that keeps hanging in your closet. So you mm-hmm. just keep using it. And the second thing is she went to an expert and helped to formulate a program and it reminds me of a daughter-in-law who is in uh, finishing who finished um, medical school now it tests your motivation it tests your out-of-the-box thinking it tests your uh, perseverance determination nursing is a profession that requires multi skills multiple skills remember we spoke about you know multitasking That's what nursing is. And this kind of evaluation, this kind of exam that's very intense, if they pass it, they go into the mechina. One more thing I'll say, and then I'll be quiet. <laughs> um, you have to pass the mechina. In other words, the Hebrew University said, okay, they can come into the mechina and you know, it's not inexpensive. But they have to get an 80 on their exams. You don't get an 80, we don't look at you. By the way, our students pass the exams. Of course. They work hard, but they pass. And the mechina for the nursing school is specific uh, emphasis on courses that they will subject matter, that they will need as they move into their academic year. I mean, her English is brilliant, is it not? Tegenek's yes. English is brilliant. Mm-hmm. I think she speaks better than my kids who grew up in an English speaking household. <laughs> I think I need to go to the first. You, you need to sit next to Tegan. <laughs> <laughs> so the program's been running for eight years, or that's when you began doing the research? Oh, good question. Uh, the program is from 16. Uh, no. 2016, uh, and this, yeah, the pilot, so about four years. Uh, the pilot. 13 to 216, and then yeah. this program, right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how many students altogether have graduated from the program and are working as nurses? 10 students graduate, graduated the, the pilot mm-hmm. program. 
which is not academic nurses, and uh, 12 students will, will graduate uh, at the end of this year, okay. our first uh, cohort. And uh, hopefully each year, uh, more and more. Now we've got, uh, as I said, uh, 78 students. Mm -hmm. I must say that at the Hebrew University, uh, which I think it's about 24,000 students all over, uh, 191 uh, Ethiopian young Ethiopian students and 78 are uh, from our uh, program. Which is, okay. That's say everything. Okay, so for the women who have graduated and who are working as nurses, um, so, one, so do you maintain a relationship with them after they graduate? Maya? We, we will. <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't graduate yet. No, the first, the pilot. Right, the pilot. The pilot, we are. One, actually, one of the pilot uh, students is, uh, she's working at the Gaza Hospital and she's now doing um, a yaldut. Um, up, she's learning in obstetrics, uh, a birthing. Finished, and now she's doing the uh, yaldut. She already did the extra program to get her academic degree, and now she's doing a specialization in birthing. Okay. So, I mean, so I guess as far as you know, have any of them experienced, I guess, any adverse, uh, you know, um, interactions? Or, I mean, do you think that, you know, they're doing really well? Um, have they any issues with, I don't know, fellow staff in the hospitals or our patients? you know, responding to them negatively, you know, because of racism or other issues or cultural issues? I'm sure the students are meeting uh, those kind of problem and they will meet it all their life, unfortunately. And uh, again, it's, uh, how do you deal with that uh, kind of uh, people that you meet? Mm. Yeah. תספרי על ה... את זוכרת את הסדנה שאת הזמנת לפיילוט? הסדנה? כן. תספרי על זה. אבל זה לא היה... זה היה... תספרי על זה, אילן. אז מיכל זה תמיד חושבים על זה. ובשביל הפיילוט גרופ, אחד מהם... She decided, you know, we'd have like a little celebration, you know, with mm -hmm. food and, you know, and we'd get together. But she decided to add an, uh, something very enriching. And she added uh, a workshop, a half day workshop with people who specialize in this about. Uh, who specialize in nursing? No, 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 no. Um, how to prevent. How to protect yourself about from uh, sexual advances? Oh, I how see. To, so like sexual how, harassment. Yeah. How to say no? How to protect yourself? How to identify it? Now, it was a very interesting uh, sadna, uh, and and they learned also not not just like tips, but physically how to handle themselves. Mm. But it's not just about sexual harassment. It's about, it could be abusive, verbal abuse. And she then equipped them with these tools as they marched off into their jobs in different hospitals throughout the country. And by the way, Michal didn't even tell you that we do keep in touch with them. In fact, Michal gets invited to weddings, births, you name it. That's nice. Um, and uh, there's a very personal relationship because remember, it's, it's more than just, you know, oh, checking you in, make sure you're passing your courses. There's a lot of very personal intervention on Michal's part. Somebody came back and wasn't doing so well academically. And after speaking with Michal numerous times, it was discovered that 
she had a very difficult issue over the summer at home and mm -hmm. she was trying to she could not get past it and and Michal helped her she shepherded her through it gave her a break and you know is able to now put her back on the path so she's really like Achotenu means sisters and Michal's like a big sister mm -hmm. are there other uh staff that work with you on the program Michal and you know like to provide additional support because I mean, I've worked in programming also <laughs> in the past for a long time. And I know sometimes it's not just coming up at the program, but you're like a therapist or a social worker. And it's a lot, you know, to provide that kind of support. So are there other staff that help in different capacities, you know, to help address issues like that? To be fair, most of the students are students like all other students of the Hebrew University and the uh, partners as uh, uh, the staff of the Hebrew University at nursing school or, or the other uh, um, departments. But some of the students uh, uh, have uh, uh, personal issues, which is uh, not easy to deal with. Sure, sure. School, uh, so actually we work with the Hebrew University together very well. And they are the partners of us. Okay. I mean, so does the school have resources then if someone is having, you know, social issues or issues at home, let's say, that they really need uh, additional support? The Hebrew uh, University. Yes, right. That's what I'm asking. Okay. Not the nursing school. Right. No, no big say for the suit of the university, I can't. Yeah, it the relationship us. between the students and the staff around some some of them will um, share with the staff and some not. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, for everyone who is watching uh, our webinar right now, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them through the Q and A feature. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Um, so I'd, I'd like to hear more about the program itself and, um, you know, for the students, like how, how you've seen their lives um, change, you know, for the better by, you know, by going through the program. Um, I think they do change. Sorry, I don't know if anybody wants to say something. Yeah, no, I, I mean, <laughs> I think it's best to <laughs> just hear from you. You're in the program. And also, you know, how is your life changed if it has, you know, in the few years that you've been in the program? It definitely changed. I mean, I met a lot of friends here, which is a good thing, because here you can't, there is something that you should know in nursing school. You cannot just study alone. It's really difficult. So making part is a really crucial part of this, because you need to study together. And that's one of the good things about the program. Um, one of the, one other thing that changed is the way that I see everything is like when I'm going in the street, it's not like, oh, I'm just going. No, you just, you can see people. And then you can, for example, if you see somebody walking with a stick, you say, oh, I, I can wonder what he has, what happened to his leg and stuff like that. It actually changed the way, the way that you think everything. Cause you don't just see a person, you see a whole medical problem or something like that that walks. You don't just see him, you see a lot of things. And you also, there is one thing that I actually do every time. Um, it's when I see somebody who struggles, mm -hmm. the first thing that I want to do is like to go out, to go to them and ask them, are you okay? Do you need any help? And they can just say, no, I'm fine. But I think that they're not. So I'm just going to walk over there and I'm just going to keep watching to see that they're, they're there to that point. And that's one of the things that also changed about me. Um, I think that it makes you... It, I don't know how to say it, you grow. You just mm -hmm. don't think the way that you used to. You you feel ma more mature, more responsible for others. You just see a lot of things differently. And that's, I mean, I think it's really good. And I don't know, um, I really like it. The way that I think right now and not before I started the program, because before that I was like, oh, what I'm gonna do, I was thinking about it's not really selfishly, but I was thinking a lot about me 
And now you're not just thinking about yourself, you're thinking about others, you're thinking about your friends. If you see one of them struggle right now, if I'm gonna see my friend struggle, I'm just gonna go over there and ask her if she needs any help, then, then I'm gonna help her, which is something that I, I did before, but not in the same level that I'm doing right now. So yes, I think it's really changes you as a person and as somebody who's part of the whole social um, community. I don't, I, it actually, like um, like I said before, you don't think about just you learning and going to make a career. You're thinking about the other ones and you can tell them, go and do something with your life because it's meaningful and it's gonna help you. You're gonna feel much better about with yourself. And mm -hmm. I didn't do that before I came here. I didn't actually think about it and now I do. So it did change me quite a bit. And um, is your family supportive? Of course, my family first, uh, when my father, actually I'm going to tell you story, when my father heard that I got into the nursing school, he told me that when we met the Alia, um, the people over there would have accepted us, ask us if, ask my parents if they want my, if they want their children to do something. And my father told them, yes, I want her, my daughter, to be in the medical field. I want her to be a nurse or a doctor. So when I told him I'm going to be a nurse, he said, I actually said that when I came to Israel. And I thought it was like amazing. They're really supportive, the whole family. That Navi. is Abba Navi. Yeah, really. <laughs> okay, so we had just a bunch of questions that came in, so I'll, I'll ask them. Um, so um, are you interested in specializing in a particular area of medicine? Yes, I actually have two that I'm conflicting about. Trauma is something that I'm really interested in, and the whole cardiac uh, field, it's also something that I really love and passionate about, the whole the heart things. It's really okay. amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So someone else wants to know, uh, I, so I guess of the women who graduated in the, in the pilot program, um, have they all um, found jobs and uh, for the students who are in the program, are they able to be in this program full time without having to work? Um, yeah. Do you want to ask? Again, if you will uh, start with the students now and I'll say, I'll tell about the uh, time. Yeah. Okay. Um, the students, not, no, we don't work. That's one, actually one of the things that the program is helping us with. We get, you know, we get a scholarship, they help us financially, we get uh, paid every month, so we don't have to work and we can be 100% on our studies, just to, it's really hard to learn and work together, so sure. when you have, when you don't have to work, it's actually really helpful, so, no, we don't. Okay, and I guess, Michal, you can take the other part of the question. Uh, the pilot, uh, all the students from the pilot are working. Uh, as I say, they even uh, go go back uh, went back to school to finish uh, the academic degree. They have to Lashlin uh, to to do uh, about two years, and uh, all of them are working uh, and going uh, they are going forward at the hospitals. Okay. And so for the uh, women who are in the program now, um, I guess who will be or graduating this year, um, what are their job prospects like? I mean, I guess, what is that process like while they're finishing up, you know, the latter part of the program? Are they already applying for jobs while they're still waiting to graduate? Or what does that look like? So you graduate after four years or five years in Hoteinu, you graduate uh, the university and then you need to do a, a gover governmental exam for license to get your license. And, uh, and then you can choose because we are so, so short with uh, nurses. So you actually can choose where or what you want to do as a nurse. Okay, so you anticipate that all of the women who will be graduating this year will easily find jobs? Actually, it's two men and uh, 10 women. Okay. They will graduate and they will, I'm sure they will have no problem to finish. And Hadassah wants them very much to stay at the hospital and work at the nurses. If I may interject for a moment, Jennifer, according sure. to 
according to the O, I'm the lady with the statistics. According to the, <laughs> according to the OECD, Israel has to more than double its nursing staff within the next couple of years. Okay. So it's, and and one other thing, Michal, correct me, but my husband's niece um, took decided to um, to go on and get a, a, a degree in nursing. So mm -hmm. she had an undergraduate and she went on for another two year program. Even before she took the government exam, she had a job in hand pending that she would pass the government right. exam. Once she passed it, she started the next day she was at work. That's how desperate the hospitals are. Mm -hmm. they, the, they just want staff. Mm hmm. So, I mean, so I, someone asked a question, Diane, she's actually our grants committee chair, co-chair, um, wants to know how COVID has affected the program. So I'm interested in one, how COVID affected Akhotenu specifically, but then also has COVID impacted, um, I guess, the need for nurses in Israel? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Now, I can't tell you how many nurses I know, you know, daughters and daughters and law friends who are now undergoing taking special courses that the government is offering now, just for an example, in respiratory nursing. Uh. Respiratory, because they have very few experts in it and they need more and more, um, more and more respiratory nurses. So there's what's coming up is not only do they need more nursing staff, they're very shorthanded. Um, shifts run 12 hours of exhausting, exhausting nonstop work. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you, I'm in the hospital a lot, okay? And I wanna tell you every nurse that I've encountered, she's eating her lunch over her computer. Yeah. They, they're not taking any breaks because there's no time. There's a constant flow of people. And now with Corona, even more so. So there are specific areas where they're requesting specialization. There is the government is already talking about really having to increase that much more mm -hmm. the nursing staff. These young women are not going to have a problem finding a job. Mm -hmm. I just really want to see one of our graduates head up a hospital. That's what mm -hmm. I want to see. That's my goal. Okay. <laughs> we must say that the students in last match uh, uh, studying by the Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were able to pivot to have all the students studying virtually. Okay. Yeah. And how, how has that been? I mean, you know, to pivot to, uh, to the virtual model, has that made it more challenging um, mm -hmm. to learn the material? Yeah, it's really difficult to just study by the Zoom because there are a lot of things that the teachers want to show us, but they can't because we're not in front of and they not, right. cannot really explain this uh, to us. Um, there is also communication problems and they most of the time the, pro the, the teachers doesn't even do a real Zoom with us. They just send in audios that they record and we have to wait and we have to learn this alone according to what they recorded. And after a while, they do a Zoom and then we can ask questions. It takes a lot of time. It takes us a lot of time because they give us so much information because it's recorded and the students, we don't ask any questions. So they just keep giving us information and it's just overwhelming and they just fill us with a lot of things. So mm -hmm. we have to study and to eat at the same time. Sometimes we don't even do that. <laughs> we, yeah. We can start in eight in the morning and and in twelve and then in twelve at night. I don't know mm -hmm. until midnight and just to sit in front of computer. It's actually really exhausting just to sit all day. Sure. And, not, and it's really it's really hard. Yeah, but but do you find that you're still able to absorb the material? Yes, some of the some of the courses are really hard. And that's when the university and Michal help us. They give us tutors. Mm -hmm. I'm, sorry, I'm supposed to start with my tutor. Mm -hmm. um, and you can study and absorb a lot of information, but sometimes you just don't have the time because if you want to focus on one, on one course, for example, if I want to do microbiology and I can focus on that, I can spend my whole day just doing mm -hmm. that. And 
neglect all the other courses and uh, you just, it's, it's like a snowball. You do that, but you forget the other one and then you do the other one and you forget about the other and it just right. And, so how many courses do you take at the same time? Right now we are, we have nine. eight or nine. Yeah. Eight Simultaneously? Nine. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. It's <laughs> right. Really I mean, and, and this year is the hardest year <laughs> that we have during the four years. Why is that? We have to start a hospital, uh, to work at the hospital department, the clinical. Yes. Uh, we have to do a clinical, uh, I don't know how you say it, uh, Itnasut Clinic. Clinic, Eileen. Right, like an internship. Uh, practical clinical work. They go into the ward, into the department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are starting. How, how long does that last? No, we started in uh, in um, December, and so in um, yeah, in a couple of weeks, and you just do it the whole the the, the rest of the years. I mean, you do it. You start in the second year, and you do it until your fourth year. Um, but we started like we do like two two days. Um, two weeks and then in the second semester it's three days and in the third year it's more and more in days until you just do the clinical and not just um, theoretical and you find the camera and all stuff. How long do you spend in the department? Ah, yeah. Otra shela, kama zman bako machwaka? It's, wow, I have a whole... Um, it, we're supposed to do in the whole years, we are supposed to do, um, I think, 96 hours. But every department, you do different hours. We don't quite know that yet. Um, I'm supposed to start um, in the Pnimit Dalet. I don't know how you say it. Um, but we do, like, every day, you, you do seven hours. It's like a shift. You do a shift. You just walk with uh, the register nurse who will explain everything to us. Mm -hmm. And it's like you're working, but you are really just watching, but you do like a full time shift. Mm -hmm. so. And so how many students are in your class specifically? Um, in Adessa, we are 90, 96, I think. But we all, um, the courses that we have online, some of them are with the other and uh, with the Safa Ofe and the Kaplan, two hospitals that work with Adasa, and with them we are approximately to 200 students. So how many students are from, uh, I guess, Akhotenu? Like how many are in the Akhotenu class, like in, in each year? I mean, you said it's 78, but that is all of the different years, so. The first, yeah. the yeah. first cohort are 12, the second uh, 25, the third, Twelve, the yeah. uh, the fourth are uh, fifteen, and fourteen at the fifth. Okay, um, so one of our viewers would like to know if uh, the government helps to support Achotenu. Yes, the government has a special section, a special law, um, and they are yes, they they are definitely partners. That's great. To help the Ethiopian Israeli community to advance them, yes. Mm -hmm. And so the rest of the funding then, I guess, comes from um, grants like ours? The rest of the funding comes from generous people such as you ladies. <laughs> A lot of private individuals, both in Israel and abroad. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's probably evenly split. Also foundations in Israel. Uh, okay. Like the program very much. That's it's a beautiful program. I don't know how anybody could not connect to it. <laughs> no, I, I mean, we certainly, you know, are proud to support it and think that, you know, this kind of work is really important. Um, or, I guess, forgive me for asking this because I don't know, but are all of the, um, the women, or I guess the students in Akhotenu, um, are they all Jewish? Yes. <laughs> You, you actually cannot come to live in Israel if you're not Jewish. You can't make an aliyah if you're not Jewish. That's the first thing that they ask you when you apply. Okay. 
Yeah, I was just curious. Um, so I guess, I mean, so we have about seven minutes left until we have to conclude the webinar. Um, so I, you know, Eileen, are there other points you wanted us to cover? Um, yes. I had a few points that I made notes of. Yes. Um, and they're completely disconnected, so I apologize. That's okay. Uh, oh, okay. Um, this is the first time ever you say that it's a very unusual program. This is a revolutionary program. Why do I say revolutionary? And I, I use this word not mildly. Not. It is the first time ever that the Hebrew University, the universities in Israel, of which there are seven or eight, are willing to accept students without the psychometric exam. Mm -hmm. This has never happened before. This is a pathbreaker. Mm -hmm. This is pioneering. And the model that's been developed, all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, God, you know, Jews don't stop talking. So it's, it's <laughs> mala sot. What can we do? That's how we <laughs> We're like the Italians, and <laughs> the word has spread. And Michal gets requests from other universities who are saying, "Well, you know, um, you know, we like this model. We how can we bring it to to us?" And we are in negotiations right now with two or three different other universities, nursing schools and other programs. Again, remember, the program has to promise that upon graduation, there's a need for this job. It, they're willing to accept uh, vulnerable sectors that we're working with people first in the university and their family or have not had this opportunity, as Teganek said, that they didn't know this opportunity existed and they're willing to accept it on our terms, which is alternative acceptance criteria, and they have to come up with some funding too. The Hebrew University funds part of it, and other people do. In other words, you can't say, I like this program, and that's your commitment. That's not enough. And so these are negotiations that take a very long time. Um, late, there is a general distrust of the healthcare system among the Ethiopian community. No surprise there. I'm not going to go back into old history. Sure. Um, and it's 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 cultural. It's language. It's it's everything. Uh, beginning with the, there was a whole process a number of years ago. They wouldn't accept blood from Ethiopians because of AIDS. And, and remember. When you go into the hospital, this is a whole new vocabulary. The lexicon is completely different than going shopping in your local supermarket. Sure, sure. And how everything connects with each other is a foreign language. If you haven't grown up in this, if you haven't read about this, this is very frightening. And the mere fact that there are going to be more and more and more Ethiopians in the healthcare system Mm -hmm. They're going to be communicators, intermediaries. They're going to be able to shepherd other Ethiopians so that they gain a greater understanding. A patient who has a greater understanding of what is going on with him or her becomes a better patient and can improve his or her health more rapidly. You become a partner with the doctor, not mm -hmm. just the person who's sitting back and taking it everything is, is said to you without any understanding. And, and by the way, this has come out in conversations with other students that I've had the, the, privilege, the pleasure and the privilege to speak with. Um, we're changing the landscape. Mm -hmm. This program's changing the landscape. I mean, you're gonna go into a hospital and the landscape's gonna look very different in a mm -hmm. few years than it did. None of our programs are short-term programs. You we're changing the Israeli, excuse me, Eileen, we're changing the Israeli society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're changing the Israeli society to accept all mm -hmm. kinds of people, and we need it. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, that's one of the reasons why, you know, JWF has invested in this program. You know, we only support social change programs, um, and we definitely recognize that in so many ways, right? This program is creating social change in Israel, not only for the Ethiopian community and for the women and men who are in Ahutenu, but, but for other Israelis. So yeah, that's really wonderful. We're really, you know, proud to support. 
So I Eileen, any additional thoughts <laughs> before we wrap up? I see in the chat uh, about uh, someone asking the chat about uh, other programs in different fields. Professional therapy is part of us, yes. It's part of Achoteno. Uh, 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 since uh, last year, students can uh, choose if they want to learn nurses or occupational therapy, and it's uh, the same uh, condition, the same, mm -hmm. condition, how do you say? Uh, and I see how many students can you accommodate in each class. Uh, we've got 25 at the second cohort. Uh, depends, but... Uh, Usually, uh, again, it's uh, correct me uh, about when uh, 200 students all over and uh, or between 12 and 25. Uh, students okay. Yeah. Michal, um, uh, we, we from the Amotot Committee from the Greater Miami Jewish Federation are very proud to support La Ofec. Is Michal also behind the new initiative? The occupational therapy? Yes, she is. Yeah. That's her initiative. We have four students in the Department of Occupational Therapy under the Faculty of Medicine at the Hebrew University. And there'll be a greater need after this corona pandemic, God willing, it should pass quickly for all kinds of therapists, occupational therapists included. All right, well, it's 11 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and, and conclude today's Impact Tuesday's webinar. Again, uh, big thanks to the three of you for what you're doing and the impact that you're having. Um, I wish you the best of luck with the rest of the program. Um, certainly, we'll keep getting updates from you that we can share with our trustees and the rest of the community. Um, so I hope, you know, the three of you stay safe. Uh, Me too. <laughs> um, so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're very happy to support the program. Um, and so for anyone who is interested in supporting all of our excellent work, um, you know, we are supported by individual donors. That is how JWF, um, you know, survives and is able to do the work that we do. Um, so you can make a donation on our website at jwfpalmbeach.org or call our office at 561 275-2200. Uh, and I want to wish everyone in the United States <laughs> a very happy Thanksgiving. Um, so take care and be well, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.